Damn, it feels good to be a Guardian. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy by Eidos Montreal released in 2021 and was part of a small list of must plays I wasn't able to get to that year until my wife came through in the clutch and somehow got me an Xbox Series X for Christmas. I was expecting something bigger. And where there's an Xbox, there must be the glory that is Game Pass. And lo and behold, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was added to Game Pass not too long ago, so it was prime time to dive in. Now, I'll be honest, the press for this game did not get me excited. The trailer lacked movie likenesses and looked decidedly knockoff, like some Destiny-adjacent reskin of the generic Marvel's Avengers template that Crystal Dynamics put out the year before. Oh, and Star-Lord's pompadour hairdo. Aren't you a little old for that hairdo? <laughs> but boy, am I glad that my instincts were off. Idus Montreal of Deus Ex Human Revolution fame, and to a lesser extent Mankind Divided and Thief 2014, are in charge here, and what they do with the material is such a pleasant, faithful, yet creative and original surprise. No doubt the characters in the world are using James Gunn's movies as their visual baseline, and for the general dispositions of the characters, but some designs like Gamora and Drax take inspiration from the comics, as do nearly all the side characters, the main story, and the backstories of the Guardians themselves. This amalgamation of the familiar with the established comics canon is masterful and oh so welcome. There's even a reference to some of my favorite random cosmic superheroes like 90s breakout star Darkhawk, and a surprise appearance from a major player who will soon be showing up on the big screen as well, who's also one of my favorite characters. Well, silence, prisoner. The commander has no time to meet with law-breaking pirates like you. That's just it, we're not pirates. We're legally incorporated heroes for hire. Yeah, that's right. You check those records, Buckethead. Novacore Licensing Permit 67398-2. Gardeners of the Galaxy? What? No. Rocket. So, I let Groot fill out the paperwork. I fixed it with an addendum. Guardians has one of the best video game scripts I have ever experienced, with only a couple silly or improbable plot points that don't really sour the experience. The setup is that the Guardians are hard up for money and go into an off-limits zone to find a creature to sell to monster collector Lady Hellbender. In doing so, they accidentally unleash an alien entity before being arrested by the Nova Corps, which are space cops a la DC's Green Lantern Corps. The Guardians are released, but with the caveat that they have a limited amount of time to raise money to pay off their huge fine, and so their journey takes them back into increasingly dangerous and seedy areas to achieve this end. They eventually bump back into the thing that they unleashed earlier and realize their actions have cosmic consequences and the galaxy is soon in desperate need of guarding. The Guardians have to learn to trust one another too and also prove themselves trustworthy to various factions they meet, so a lot of game time is spent getting to know each Guardian and watching them play off of each other. Conversations flow effortlessly across cutscenes and gameplay, and they balance the uncharted levels of callouts and quips very well without exhausting the player or trying too hard to be funny. I can point out maybe one or two scenes that just in land where Mantis shows up and just tries to kind of quirk her way through all the jokes. Hi guys. You should not be in this place. But beyond that, every other joke was pretty much S tier, and, and dare I say it, they're often even better than in the movies. I actually like these versions of the Guardians a little bit more than their film counterparts, and that's saying a lot because I think the Guardians films are some of the MCU's best work. The characters are just more comic accurate and more fleshed out than their on screen counterparts. I cannot refute this. Oh, and Gamora here reminds me a lot of Mary Elizabeth Winstead, so, you know, Ewan McGregor, you lucky bastard. The script has an incredibly organic tone, touching on loss and grief poignantly without becoming morbid and maintaining levity without being clownish. Despite all its epic set pieces, the story never loses sight of the people moving through it and wraps up with aplomb, even baiting the audience with the ultimate Marvel move and a fake-out ending with a mid credit scene reopening the game back up for a final level after one more thing goes wrong. Now, while the story's destination is largely the same, how you accomplish this end is not, as there are branching narrative paths and dialogue choices throughout. As your teammates chatter, you can take sides or redirect the team to a more unified mindset, which will sometimes impact how your team solves a pressing problem, and you can choose between different avenues to the main quest as well. Certain distinct sections play out very differently based on whether you made friends with powerful entities before, or perhaps you declined to pay a fine and later risk the wrath of the space police and other such dilemmas. The dialogue choices remind me of a much simpler version of Human Revolution's dialogue system, where you're trying to suss out what type of personality your dialogue partner has and how to appeal to them authentically. These choices are also given narrative weight as the Guardians are all trying to better themselves by becoming less burdened by past wrongdoings and learning to trust the help of others. And 
While all the Guardians are given their time in the spotlight, the story is decidedly centered around Star-Lord. He's coming into his own, slowly but surely, but he has to excise a lot of baggage still to become the leader his friends need him to be. You can say that again. The team seems very new to working with each other in this incarnation, and so there's still a lot of infighting and frustration. And when Star-Lord reconnects with an old lover and finds out that he might be a father, he realizes that his responsibility is not just to himself anymore. His voice actor, John McLaren's Canadian surfer dude Timber, can be a little grating after, you know, 10 to 15 hours, but his performance, especially towards the end of the game, is incredibly well-pitched and touching. Groot's all reliable as he always is, Rocket's a fast-talking pain in the ass, Gamora comes off as much more likable than her dour movie counterpart, and Drax has more missing-the-point jokes at his expense, but he's still nobody's fool. You're likely going to love these characters' fresh portrayals and love hearing from them again and again. In keeping with the story's focus, you only get to directly control Star-Lord. Now don't fret, as you can also give commands to the other Guardians in combat, but more on that in a moment. As for Star-Lord, you unlock various abilities like a Gears of War reloading mechanic where hitting the right timing window supercharges your gun's damage for the next magazine, and you'll gradually unlock elemental effects that recharge over time, like ice to slow down enemies or lightning to take out their shields. The combat is essentially just third-person auto-aim shooting with heavy amounts of jetpack dodging, but the real fun lies in a simple command system where you can individually order your teammates to pull off special attacks of their own. Essentially, you're just going down the list of guardians, spamming your favorite attacks, shooting guys while you wait for the cooldowns, and then repeating this process until you've beaten all the enemies in an arena. The combat's not incredibly deep, but it is gloriously kinetic and full of great particle effects, and there are some strategic elements that you'll want to pay attention to. Not all attacks are suited for every enemy type, as some bigger enemies shrug off Groot's constrictive vine attack and respond better to pure DPS. I also noticed one boss battle in particular made me focus on using Star-Lord's invincibility mode to withstand the constant barrage of projectiles, as opposed to trying to outpace him with my high DPS fan the hammer attack. Each fight nets you points, and when you've earned enough, you gain a level which nets you an ability point. Get two or three of these ability points, and you can spend them to unlock an ability for one of your guardians. Each character receiving four in total, three you unlock, and one final ultimate that unlocks at a prescribed point in the story is a symbolic blossoming, if you will, after a guardian has experienced a milestone like overcoming their fears. There are plenty of opportunities for you to take advantage of the environment, too. It's hanging objects can be cut down by Gamora to damage those beneath, Drax can pick up and throw heavy objects or explosive barrels, and designated places can be grenaded by rocket or spec attacked by Groot. There are also some powerful momentum attacks that pop up like QTE prompts, and you've got a short window to hit the appropriate button to link up with another guardian and do something cool like severing a robot's arm off. You also have access to the huddle, a sort of recharging mini game where you comically step out of the fight for a minute to regroup with your team and must respond appropriately to your teammate's state of mind to rally them. Pick the wrong response and you only give yourself full health and a damage boost, but answer the needs appropriately and the whole team gets these advantages. The game's never really hard enough to warrant worrying too much about these extra mechanics, but they can save your hands a lot of clicking if you find the most efficient and powerful combinations of all these different abilities, plus they're just fun to pull off. Now, combat tends to play out pretty similarly as far as your input, as only a couple enemies need you to knock out their shields with electricity, or pull them off ledges with your telekinetic grab, or freeze these little cube guys to disable their protective coating. And when all is said and done, battles always end with a slow-mo flourish to the last down enemy, just like the Batman Arkham series. Oh, and speaking of the Arkham series, you can turn on a visor mode that recalls Batman's detective vision, which highlights parts of the environment you'll be able to interact with, or just learn a little bit more about. This is especially helpful when you need to direct a specific team member to use their unique skills to help you progress, like rocket hacking a panel, root making a root bridge, or Gamora and Drax smashing or hacking through barriers. Yeah, amazing! Levels also encourage exploring the side paths to find new costumes and spare parts that can be used to upgrade your gear, so that you can you know, have your shields recharge twice as fast, your elemental guns will use less charge, so you can shoot longer before you have to wait on them to cool down. Now that being said, Guardians is a pretty linear game that employs all the generic Sony exclusive tropes that you've seen a hundred times, like the obligatory platforming in a straight line, lead shimmying, squeezing through narrow spaces to hide loading screens, and sliding down long precipices like Jedi Fallen Order. I've played enough of these types of games to be a little triggered when these overused, overdirected tropes are used, but it's to Guardians' credit that it takes all the edge off by entertaining in every other way it can. And what soothes the possibly intrusive thought that Guardians is just another one of those overproduced third person games is that aside from the obviously great dialogue and story, levels are often breathtakingly beautiful and epically scaled. Wide shots regularly show off the scope of the detailed geometry these otherworldly areas possess. There's so much variety in what environments are made out of, whether classic 60s sci-fi looking areas filled with repeating cubic shapes, or planets made out of what I can only describe as macaroni and cheese looking flora. 
So interesting. Let's all stick our fingers in it. The game works so well because dialogue and story elevate the simple but satisfying gameplay, and the atmosphere and the scope is so pleasingly realized by the wonderful art team. This is a vision clearly inspired by the movies, but more so in terms of the bright color palette, because Idis Montreal goes beyond anything I've ever seen in the comics or in the MCU. Every kudo imaginable should be sent these folks away, truly. It's just transportive. So on that note, to avoid repeating myself too much, let's set in stone why you should or shouldn't try out Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now this isn't some doom eternal test of skill. I didn't die except by accident one time in the first six or seven hours, and after that only a couple of times during some tough sections. The combat's not so much easy as straightforward, asking you to strive for a skateboarder's sense of freedom and momentum, rattling off companion abilities and knee sliding around arenas blasting and using the different gun abilities. Momentum and joy are the goals here, which is important because this is a chunky game, clocking in about 12 to 15 hours I'd wager. Now because it's so well paced, I was never just playing to get to the end either, unlike some games like The Last of Us. The plot is well constructed and just intricate enough to make you feel like you've gone through a big journey without feeling like they're just characters added for fan service. All of the characters are lovable and distinct from their movie counterparts, so you're getting a new dimension fleshed out by the comics lore, so mad kudos to Idis Montreal for their respectful take and attention to detail. Guardians of the Galaxy isn't the most innovative game you'll ever play, but it is one of the best interactive and cinematic experiences you're ever likely to play in the genre. It's bereft of bloat and seems completely interested in the audience's time and ability to have fun. All of its parts are in service to the whole. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Aren't you forgetting something? Thanks so much for watching. I hope your life utterly slaps. Until next we meet. I'm out.